Good morning. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I wanted to uh, show you guys my new chainsaw I got online. It's, uh, it says gasoline chainsaw. It's a Chinese saw. It's pretty interesting. It doesn't really have a brand on the box. It just says chainsaw and then it has chainsaw in all these different languages. Gasoline chainsaw. Has some picture of some wood. If you notice here, there's a picture of some kids climbing on a wood pile, which <laughs> this, these kids right here are balancing on a wood pile. I don't know how safe that actually is, but uh, I guess it looks kind of fun. It's something I probably would have done when I was a kid um, until the, the wood comes crumbling down and you twist your ankle or something has some uh, specs here on the side of the box fuel tank capacity oil tank capacity dry weight pitch guide bar size and size of product and let's see what else well there's some pictures of some office people here which I didn't order from these people but uh, I ordered it online uh, through Walmart uh, cost me $75 and uh, 29 cents total and uh, free shipping and that was the total $75 so uh, not bad and let's uh, let's pop it open and see what's in here and what I'm up against uh, putting this thing together because I can tell it needs assembly all right let's check it out Okay, so, uh, oh, and a side note, um, the reason I bought this saw, because I have chainsaws, um, I used to have a small little saw, <clears throat> a still, uh, cost me like $550 back in the day uh, for getting up in the top of uh, trees and, and taking the tops out and the branches uh, as you climb up the tree, you know, something you can hold with one hand and reach out and zap branches off uh it's pretty light they have it rated at about six pounds so that ain't too bad um but anyway uh 75 dollars compared to uh 550 dollars well that's a pretty good deal in my book uh even if it just lasts me a bit so let's see what's in the box here got the uh looks like the owner's manual little uh guard here protect the bar and the chain there's the bar it's a 12 inch bar it's like it's got a little uh nice little tip on it there with a uh let's see here let's take it out see better little sprocket tip there with a place where you can shoot some grease in there to keep it lubed yeah looks all right Chainsaw, double guard. Let's see here. Little tool pouch. Let's see what's in here. Allen wrench. Plastic piece of some kind. I'm not sure where that goes, but I'm sure I'll find out. There's the file. There's your tool to take off the guard. Little uh, flat tip screwdriver. Another Allen wrench. Something else floating around in here. Oh, a couple little screws. And, oh yeah, let me see here, I got the, this little deal here, the dog here, the bites into the wood. Okay, I think that's all for the little tool pouch. A little funnel to put some 
fuel in and I notice right away this is broken it's cracked damaged during shipping that's no big deal I got a bunch of these little fuel mix fuel oil mix here it's got my ratios listed here yeah, that'll be useful that way I can I can do exact mixing and what on earth there she is oh there's the chain three eighths saw chain yeah. Yeah. all right here's the saw There she is. Boy, that thing's really light. I could hold that one-handed and zap limbs all day long with that thing. Nice, real light. Feels pretty balanced, too. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's put this thing together. I'm looking at it. I was messing around with it a little bit. This little mechanism here, this chain brake mechanism, uh, I don't know if I'm real happy with that. It feels a little cheap, um, but uh, as long as it keeps me from getting hurt, then I, I, I suppose it's uh, doing its job. We'll see. Let's take her apart here. Um, I was looking in the uh, owner's manual here, and when I turned to the page about assembling it, the uh, the instructions aren't bad. I can read them well enough, but the uh, the pictures or the illustrations are really blurry. I mean, to the point where. You can even you can hardly even tell what's going on. So I think that right there is a, a negative in my opinion. But uh, what the heck, no big deal, I guess. We'll, we'll see. So let's go ahead and uh, take off this uh, guard here. It's got one nut here. And I was looking at it, and I noticed there's another uh, Allen wrench uh, screw here that needs to be taken off in order for this to, to pop off. And they gave me two Allen wrenches, so it looks like this is the right one here. Okay, so got that off. So it looks like if you were to pull maintenance on this out in the field, you'd, you ha you'd have to have these two tools here. Um, most chainsaws just require this tool in order to uh, do what you need to do if your uh, chain comes off your bar or whatever. But in this case, it it's requires uh, two tools, just to let you know. Okay, let's pop this off. Okay, well that came off, but uh, not as easily as I would like it to. There was a little bit of effort to get that off. These little tabs here, I can see those, uh, I could see those possibly getting broke off at some point. They're not, they don't look very sturdy to me. So this design, I'm not real happy with. Um, I mean, you know, compared to my still that uh, I used to have. It, it seemed like it was much easier getting that off. But, hey, $75. Remember that number. It's hard to beat. Set that aside. 
Okay, so it tells you in the instructions the first thing to do here is uh, put your little uh, dog on here. And what I noticed with this, you know, it, it, you know, you, you can put it on two ways. You either have your dogs up or your dogs down, and you don't really want your dogs down. So, um, but you see here, if you look real close, the way they've milled this, this plastic here. You know, if you put it, put the dogs on the way they're supposed to go, up like that, you know, you'd think that this is supposed to sit in there. You know, you've got this, this angle here, which is this angle here, and then you've got these two corners, which should, that should just slide in there nice and flush. Now, I notice what they've done here is, you know, that's just a place where, you know, stuff can get caught up and stuff. Uh... They've drilled, it looks like they've drilled an additional hole way out here, um, oops, on the front of this case. And I mean, there isn't but about a sixteenth of an inch, or maybe maybe an eighth if you're lucky, between the edge of this hole here and the front of this casing, which could break out. So I'm thinking that is not where that thing needs to go. But the only way you can get it in there flush is if you were to go ahead and screw it in right there. And that makes absolutely no sense to me because you've got this hole here where and this hole here where where that thing should sit in. So if I tilt if I put this in and I put it at the angle where it's supposed to go like that, that's where it should be going in and the holes line up. The problem is though is that when they milled the plastic at the factory you can see right here they didn't cut this out and I think that's why they went ahead and put this extra hole in here because they realized that they'd made a, a engineering mistake and that was their quick fix and I don't like that because I feel like that's gonna break it's just gonna break off there so what I did was I put this where it's supposed to be and then I took a pencil and I drew a pencil line on the plastic that uh, followed the, uh, the shape of the dog there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take my torch and a chisel and I'm going to remove this little plastic edge here and see if I can get this thing to sit in there flush where, where it should be. Because if I were to put it on like that, it's flush down here on the bottom, but then it sits up on that plastic, so it's crooked. And I know that can't be the way that that's supposed to go in there. It doesn't make any sense to me that they would uh, engineer it that way. So um, I'm going to grab my torch and my chisel and see if I can slowly get that plastic out of there and get this dog on. All right, be right back. Okay, so... I went out and got my torch, and uh, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, I don't know if I can get the uh, tip of my uh, chisel hot enough with this propane to uh, melt that plastic, because I have no idea what kind of plastic it is. Um, but I'm going to give it a try. And uh, I was just going to take and, and cut the dog, the metal, with my grinder. I, I could cut just you know notch it out here and get it to go in there but I, I did I really didn't want to do that because then I you know you're making this piece here weaker and you know when you're jamming that into a log and and uh, cutting I don't want it to break off so I'm thinking I can just take the little tip here off uh, with with some heat and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get that on there properly
Mm, that seems to be working. I don't want to take too much off. I don't want to go too deep. Okay, so uh, I was able to, uh, that didn't take very long at all. I was able to melt that plastic out just ever so slightly. And now this thing goes on right where it's supposed to go. It follows all the angles and uh, it's on there flush. So great. I'll go ahead and uh, Get this screwed on there and then we'll go on to the next step okay, okay. so i uh i got the uh, bar and chain on i just uh it goes on the same way as any other saw except there's only one nut here where usually there are two nuts there's one nut here and then the, don't forget there's one down here this little allen screw here so there are your two uh, nuts that hold this thing on and then that's your adjusting uh, screw for the uh, tightness of the chain and one thing I wanted to um, to note too on this uh, chain brake system here is uh, when you want to go ahead and, and put the brake on, you just uh, pressing it forward, it it does what it's supposed to do very easily. Um, it locks the, the chain from moving. But here's the thing. If you want to release that brake, don't, even out here, I wouldn't pull it back out here too far because this thing bends. It just... It just it just seems so flimsy and cheap here the way it's designed so bring your hand over here where it's more in line uh, with the latch and pull it back like that and I believe that that will prevent you from breaking this off uh, in the future because it's just held on by this one screw here and it just you know just don't don't try to pull this back and lock it just pull your hand over here and go ahead and get your hand in line with that latch and pull it back and then it seems nice and solid no problem so overall um, you know besides the uh, the problem with the engineering on the the log dog there um, but we took care of that with the chisel and, and torch. It goes together pretty easily. Here's your uh, your air filter cover here. This just unscrews. It's it's pretty pretty easy. You just unscrew it and it it pops off. Just pops off. And there's your your air filter and your spark plug and it goes back on pretty easily okay and that's it and then here it says choke start run so uh, that's for this deal here this here you know it pops out and then it it'll go back in it'll pop out and stay and then you know when you start it you know it'll it'll pop back in and uh, for the next video that's what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put some fuel in this and uh, interesting enough uh, it talks about uh, 10 weight 40 
for the bar oil, which uh, I've always used uh, just regular bar oil, um, gallon of bar oil, but it says right here, it says chain oil, motor oil, SA10W30. So I'll go ahead and put that in when we power it up. And the fuel mixture is 25 to one. And my other chainsaws are 50 to one. So, um, but they've got this nice little mixer can that came with the saw. So it should be pretty easy to get the mixture right. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys got something out of that. Next video, we'll be uh, starting it up and uh, cutting through some wood with it and see how it works. Oh, and uh, just a little side note, this little uh, case here that the, t that the chain was in, um, you can use it to, uh, to hold your other little tools that came with the unit. And if anybody can please give me a comment and tell me where this little plastic deal goes. Um, I tried, you know, taking these caps off and screwing it in there because I thought maybe it it was for a hose or something where you could just uh, squeeze gas out and into the unit without having to pour it into this thing, which again was broken. You can see the crack there when it, when I got it. But if somebody could tell me what this is for and where it goes, I'd be greatly appreciative of that. All right, well, I'll hold on to it for now. Okay, so um, that's that's a wrap for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Oh, um, we're back here with the uh, Chinese chainsaw. And uh, I've uh, mixed the fuel, 25 to 1 ratio. And uh, speaking of chainsaw, I just wanted to show you here. It says uh, chainsaw. And it says chainsaw here. And then it says chainsaw here. And then it says chainsaw up here. And then it says chainsaw here. And it says chainsaw here and then it says chainsaw here so the bottom line is this is a chainsaw okay and they <laughs> them chinese folks really want to make sure you understand that okay uh, another thing here too i noticed uh, on the warning label here it says warning in english but then everything else is in a foreign language so i don't know, really know what they're warning me about but I could probably do some kind of a translation uh, later on and figure that out. Anyway, let's, let's see if we can uh, crank this up here in a minute. First thing I want to talk to you, though, about is uh, what I did with the fuel ratio. So here's the little uh, container that they give you with the saw, and it's for mixing fuel and oil. And to mix uh, a batch of 25 to 1, you want to go up here to the 10 mark. It's the highest mark here on the fuel side of the can. This is the fuel side. And go ahead and, and uh, unscrew this and add fuel to this side only. Not this side over here. This is the oil side. So go ahead and fill your fuel up to the 10 mark. And make sure you use a 90 octane or higher fuel. That's what it says in the owner's manual. I've already uh, put some of this fuel in the saw, so it's it's down below 10 right now. But what I did was I filled this side first up to the 10 mark right here. It's probably hard to see. I'll probably uh, mark that with a Sharpie later. But here's the 10 mark with fuel. Then you come over here on this side and unscrew this cap and then you pour in the oil to the other 10 mark which is right here and you'll notice that right beside that 10 mark it says 25 to 1 on there okay so fuel to 10 oil to 10 
and then you you just mix them you know the the oil is going to come out of here into the fuel and then you mix the fuel back into the oil part and then you you keep doing that and you keep doing that and you shake it around a little bit until that's all good and mixed up in there and then you can go ahead and pour it into your saw I use this stuff here um, I watched a guy do a uh, video comparison of, uh, of this stuff super tech versus AMS oil and the AMS oil seemed to outperform this here oil but this this oil here is the full synthetic and uh, the guy that did the comparison just did the regular two cycle super tech so I'm, I'm hoping that this oil right here will be more comparable to the AMS oil but they both even the the regular two cycle super tech did did pretty well on the comparison so I'm not afraid to uh, use this. I got this at Walmart, it's pretty cheap. And then as far as the bar oil is concerned, I had a quart of uh, 1030 laying around and that's what I added into the, uh, the bar oil uh, compartment on the saw. Cause that's what it said. You can use 1030 or 1040, depending on the uh, season and temperature. That you're operating the saw so just to let you know all right so uh here comes the moment of truth uh we're gonna go ahead and start this thing up i don't know if it's gonna be super cold-blooded like one of my other saws is or if it's gonna crank right up i have not a clue but i'm very curious to find out so uh, in the manual it says to go ahead and uh, flip the switch to the on position, which is located right here. It's just on and off. Okay, flip it to the on position. And this is the choke here. So they say to pull this out. And when you pull it out, it kind of locks in place there for you. And, uh, and then they said to uh, go ahead and... Uh, uh, use this little plunger deal here uh, to get some fuel in there and here comes the fuel I can see it it's in there all right got plenty of fuel in there all right I've got the uh, chain brake on so the chain uh, won't move and uh, let's go ahead and see what happens Oh, second crank. I heard it try to start. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and push the trigger now, and, I'm, and that's gonna, when you push the trigger, this uh, choke is gonna automatically uh, pop down into the run position, like that, okay? Uh, you squeeze this up here, and then you pull the trigger right here, and then this popped back down. Okay, let's see if she cranks up. Pretty nice. I think this will work 
well for me up in the top of a tree. One more time. Let's give her full bore. I can see right now that uh, I'll need to adjust the chain so but they say that you know that happens when you first use them because those chains uh, they expand a little bit and uh, so I'll, I'll tighten that up but uh, overall this thing cranked right up like it was supposed to I mean one pull two pull and uh, it cut through that dry alder uh, branch like it was nothing. It, it felt really aggressive going through it too. So, um, geez, if this thing keeps running like this, I'll, uh, I'll be real happy with that. 75 bucks for a uh, little Chinese chainsaw. That's a good price for me. Thank you.